Добрий день. З вами Welcome. I am Olga Tomanova and I welcome everybody who has joined us at the Ugo Media Center the Ukn and Forum. Now we are into the day number 219 since the beginning of the full-scale aggression of Russia of Ukraine. I would like to thank the media community for delivering truth around the world. At 1300, we are having a briefing with the Ivan Fedor of the mayor of Melitopol. We'll be talking about the situation in that city. Currently, we have been joined by Alexander Kornienko, the first deputy speaker of the Ukrainian parliament. Welcome, sir. Can you hear us, sir? Welcome again. Will you tell us about the following? The hottest topic of today is that the so-called occupational authorities have declared about the beginning of the sham referenda in the temporarily occupied territories. What will be the response of the parliament? We know for sure that this sham referenda will end up in the result that we can all forecast. What's your take on that? At the previous stages of planning of this sham referendums, we already passed an appeal to international organizations, including the United Nations, to the effect that we will never acknowledge such decisions. Our committee at the Parliament on the issues of the statehood and the democracy issues have been working very seriously on that. They came up with the appeal, but it was the day before yesterday when we saw the decision at the result of the stand-up of the Russian President Putin to the effect when he was talking about the zombie army that is aiming at occupying Ukraine. We stated once again that such results of this sham referenda will never be accepted or recognized. We also highlighted that the greater threats to Ukraine are, the more we will ask our backers to provide the weaponry, the material help, financial help to cover all the current expenditures for us to be able to overwhelm the Russian Federation in the fight for democracy and freedom. The so-called partial mobilization, what kind of impact will that have on us? Yesterday and the before yesterday, we were working on the state budget when we launched the budgetary process. Half of the state expenditures will be spent on the inf law enforcement, uh, other institutions of defense and security, including the Ministry of um, extraordinary situations. In general, what we see is that the Ukrainians will not be cowed, but in a parallel process, we are beefing up our defense and we are working in terms of business as usual, meaning that we've been fighting Russia for six months now. The whole country is waging this war. Every Ukrainian is currently on the battlefield. There is no panicking here. We are encouraged to work more and more. Or perhaps we will be trying to persuade our colleagues in the diplomatic scene through diplomatic challenge on every format and possible fora. We will be encouraging for a greater support of Ukraine, including the current General Assembly sitting of the United Nations. We've seen the meetings of our ministers with the G7 ministers, different dele delegations will be heading abroad, including the interparliamentary 
assembly will be delivering this kind of information. And our diplomat number one, our president, and the foreign minister are doing everything possible for the help for Ukraine to grow incessantly. We will be receiving such help to fight every minute, every day, our enemy, and we will not be cowed by the threats from the Russian Federation. The budget for the 2023 is a hot topic for all Ukrainians. What are, are the challenges faced by the Ukrainian parliament? Would you speculate on that? The parliament is currently working effectively in the mode where we are trying to implement the seven points on a road to the fully-fledged membership in the EU. And the second part is the, our full implementation and legal agreements, the, the agreement of the Ukrainian legislation with that of the European Union. This is what drives our act community in the first place to make sure that every committee in the parliament is working on the European integration and we are working with different European parliaments on that. Our secretary of the, of the committee that I am part of is very active on that so the parliament is encouraging the European integration of our country. Our military have delivered a beautiful counteroffensive. We have now a lot of deoccupied territories. Let us talk about the renovation of the statehood. When will you be thinking and be appointing the heads of the local administrations to make sure that people enjoy normal life? It is well known that the processes are underway. In some places, some authorities have been already appointed, and the more intensive process is on the way. As you mentioned, the statehood and its renovation is on the top of the agenda. And uh, this is considering, for the, of course, for the authorities of the local military authorities in Kharkiv province and other regions, and the local authorities have been empowered to run the process. Of course, we saw uh, instances of collaboration, and it will require the attention of the local military administrations. What we want to make sure is that the people are enjoying the possibility and ability to come back for the renovation to be taking place, at least at the minimal level, to restore communications. As we saw that Ukrainian railway established the connection, railway connection to the Kupiansk on the second day of liberation. We have provided for a quite an substantive amount of money for the renovation of the deoccupied territories. We are talking about 70 billion grivnians. So this is the day-after-day day activities that we will be spending on building bridges, helping people to install windows and doors in their houses, and uh, we'll be doing this through the military administrations. Ladies and gentlemen, questions from the floor, please. Over in forum, Mr. Kornienko, would you go into detail on how and when the first reading of the state budget bill will take place? I understand that members of the parliament know the figures. Members of parliament are now trying to adjust those. What are the points that are most discussed, which chapters are being amended and talked about most. You see, every parliamentary faction will divulge what they are concerned about. They, I will not take away their piece of bread. One of the issues, I think, 
that the main thing is not about dates, and uh, it's a security matter. I'm not going to talk about that in particular. But we know that we want to have it passed, the budget passed, as soon as possible. Before the war, the beginning or the mid-November would have seen the reading and until the 1st of December, normally, that law would have been signed. We don't have such time frame at this point in time. We have to come up with a more or less understandable state budget as soon as possible to have it passed and uh, looked into by the ministers, by the Minister of Finance, by the President, to make sure that we could go on working on that. This is what the Prime Minister is concentrating his attention on. So beyond the date that I would like, I cannot tell you about from the security issues, I can assure that until the mid of October, the budget will be voted on. And I will reiterate the point that the gentleman's agreement is that members of parliament will not inundate this process with a lot of adjustments. The first reading, of course, is about the amendments and propositions. At this point in time, we understand that the budget will be passed, and of course there are no extra that we can allow ourselves. There are no more questions. I can see that a lot of people have been following us. We've been talking to Alexander Kornienko, first deputy speaker of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine. Next briefing will take place at 1400. It will be hosted by Ivan Federal. He'll be talking about the situation in Militopol. Stay tuned. Thank you.
1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 